Hello there folks, and welcome to a tutorial of Crusader Kings 2 with me Midgeman. Hello. Uh, if you're new to the channel, hello, and this is a... I said hello way too many times there, but this is a tutorial guide for new players, specifically new players, with all of the DLC currently available up to the recently released Holy Fury. Now, do note that I will be playing this technically on the pre-release version of Holy Fury, so subtle things may change and I will make an, any amendments in later videos. But we're going to go jump right in. Now, if you're, new, if you're a new player to CK2, something you do want to note is that there is certain places and times and periods to play in. Uh, with multiple versions of the DLC, uh, they added different start dates, but the original is the 1066 start date. But instead, we're actually going to be starting in the early Middle Ages start date, purely because there is less major nations that a new player would come up against, and I personally think where we're going to be starting with this, it tends to be easier. But there are some slightly different mechanics with this start date that I will also be going over. So we're going to set up a custom game, because we're not going to pick Charlemagne or any of those, but um, we're going to be joining and playing over on Ireland. Now, Ireland is known to the CK2 community as Newbie Island, because it's one of the easiest places to play and it gets you a real good feeling for the game before you jump into things like playing as Charlemagne and managing giant empires, or playing as, say, Guy the First and being the king of um, Jerusalem in the early start days. So we're actually going to jump in as a duke down in Ireland, and I am going to go for uh, this guy. Uh, Don... <laughs> I'm not even going to try that. Don Cothade of uh, Connacht, yeah? So, of Connacht. And uh, we're going to jump right in. And I'm going to leave all of the... I, If you are playing with all the DLC as a new player, I would suggest turning Sunset Invasion off, because uh, my god does it... Um, does it... Does it uh, throw you through a loop, shall I say? And we are going to be playing on Iron Man mode just to show you that this can all be done without having to put in console commands or anything like that. So we're going to start up the game. That's fine. So when you load up CK2, a new save, this will appear and it just gives you a brief overview of uh, where you're playing, who you're playing as. So here it will show you I'm playing as an Irish Catholic King. I'm technically a King, but it's only of a duchy level title. Now I'll go over that uh, in a second, what that actually means. Just jumping in right here with a different segment of video, purely because I didn't like my description of the levels of title in the game. So, starting off, we have the barony level titles. So, barony level titles within CK2 are secondary holding titles. So, if we click on... I'm using the, the Byzantine Empire here as the example because I can show most of the examples directly. Uh, a barony level title is under the counts. So, if we took this county, a barony level title would be one of the bishoprics cities or um, castles that's directly underneath you. An example of it. this is this. They are surrounded by a bronzed ring portrait, and they are the lowest level of titled character in the game. Baronies cannot be played by players directly, but they are a titled piece of land, and you can be a count with baronies under your direct control. You cannot be a barony on its own. So... That's the first level. Obviously, technically, the first level is lowborn or un unlanded, but I'm not counting that. The second level is county. So a county level title is one of these. So just any named province is a county level title. It is shown by the prim primary holding of a province, and that is the county level title. You'll see counts are silver ringed uh, characters um, in particular, and then on to that, there is the th level 3 titles, which is duchy level titles, which is a title level that is in charge of multiple counts, uh, normally to a de jure duchy. They are often uh, 
silver rings with like gems or like um, extra like flags and stuff around the the portrait. They're a duchy level title, and they're shown by a an icon with uh, this crown level. And then above that, you have kingdom level titles. Kingdom level titles you'll see on the map, they look a bit bigger than duchy level titles with, in Christian nations, this gold rim. Uh, so they're kingdoms, they form natural kingdoms as you would expect them on the map. So Hungary, as a kingdom level title, is Hungary, surprisingly. Um, and then finally, there are empire level titles. Empire level titles are, as you get, so kingdoms uh, control countries, empires controlled multiple kingdoms. So a de jure empire of Byzant the Byzantine Empire is this many kingdoms. <laughs> Bit crazy, but it's uh it's the way it is. And um, that's the f four levels of title in CK2. Okay, back to the tutorial videos. Um, so um, this will be the map when you first load it in. Look at it; it's lovely and big, and looks very confusing. Uh, this is. And it, and it looks like a world map with all the uh, dynastic shields and area shields on it. Um, but this is one of the harder map modes to play from. And, and this is only really relevant if uh, you're fighting battles. Personally, the best um, map mode to be playing from is the one down here called Realms. So if you click that. And you get all this nice coloured overview that you'll see a lot of screenshots from. And this is, this is, the, over this is the map mode that people generally play from. So... I'm actually going to just quickly turn the music down ever so slightly because CK2 is overpowering beyond belief. And you want to be able to hear my voice. So, we're playing as King Don. And uh, this let's, let's go through the interface at first. So, up here, if you click your character portrait, you open up your character's profile, so to speak. And uh, this gives you all the information of the character. So you have the character's stats here uh, listed out. There's uh, the stats of diplomacy, martial, stewardship, intrigue, learning, and then uh, a relatively new one, personal combat skill. This is uh, one that uh, is was recently changed. So I will be going over some stuff to do with that um, in a later video. We also find out our family here. So we have a wife. Her name is Maureen of House Croven. Maureen, maybe. Uh, here's her stats and all her traits. And uh, we have a son, apparently. Uh, Karthmag, who is 27. And his stats are here. So he's uh, not a very intrigued or learned person. But uh, we'll, we'll go into looking into him in a bit longer. Here's our, uh, our house. And uh, the whole thing with CK2 is that if your house or your, your lineage dies out, you lose. So uh, it's very important to keep a, keep an eye on this um, up here. Now, over here we have our, our traits and education. So the, the furthest left will be your education. So our character is a scholarly theologian, which is the learning trait, uh, like uh, education path. And it's of level three. You can tell by that the three uh, pluses below. The max, I believe, is level five. I can't remember off the top of my head. Great start to a um, <laughs> for a tutorial, but uh, I'll place this on all on an overlay. And as you can see, uh, we are a humble man. We are brave. We are also deceitful, and we are temperate. Now, the green traits are what are known as pious traits. So they're like the uh, good. I'm gonna put in air quotes good traits. Uh, if you're trying to be a religious or pious person, they they will help you out for that. But then they have. Then you also have the what I call bad traits. But none of them are bad. They're far from it. Um, these are the red ones. These are the sinful traits. So you have wrath, pride, for example, and all of them correlate to the seven deadly sins. And then you have neutral traits, which are just other ones that affect you. Now you can see when I hover over these, they actually affect certain elements of the game. So um, humility adds to my piety, which is like uh, my religious score, so to speak. And we have uh, same trait opinion, so people who are also humble will like us more. And people who have the opposite trait, which is pride, um, will uh, hate us a bit. Uh, bravery, for example, adds two 
two base to my marshal, so it's a very, very good trait. It also uh, affects our personal combat skill down here. It uh, has vassal opinion, vassals, the people below us, like uh, this count over here. He likes us more because we are a brave man and he can respect that. And also it affects our combat in uh, of, our, of our troops. Their morale defense is better because they they want to get behind their brave leader. And um, people who are craven, which is the opposite to brave, uh, dislike us uh, if we're brave. So what does all this mean? And what does having high and low stats mean? So... As I said, we're a learned person, so we have quite a high learning. Um, so one of the main routes, one of the main things in CK2, sorry, is you have these stats up here. Now, these up here is wealth. You have uh, prestige, piety, your demand size, which is how much land you directly own, and then your vassal limit, which is how many vassals you have and what's the maximum vassals you can have at your current size. Now, we're going to focus on the third, first three, because they, they're your currency, so to speak, in this game. So, obviously, you have wealth, which you can use to upgrade uh, buildings. You can use it to hire troops, uh, buy items. It, it's trading currency. Then you have prestige, which is your renown, your how people look at your family. And this does get carried over into your score directly, um, at, uh, which allows to the end of the game. So, your prestige and piety... Uh, of each succession of your character gets added up and banked in and whatever you end the game with with the score uh, that's your score that's how the game sort of runs so prestige is like um, honor and chivalry and that gains you prestige it can also uh, something I'll get onto you can use it to build buildings in certain types of land uh, and then piety is the same but to do with religion and things along those lines and they can all be spent to for example get people in and uh, in events and you, you'll see where it comes in as we go to play so learning people are better suited to getting piety and they use piety a lot more and uh because they have certain paths with other things that have been added in dlcs but we're gonna we're gonna get on to that eventually we are gonna just quickly look at our character so over here you'll see there is choose an ambition so these are like mini goals to get you going with each character so we've, for example we've got create a treasury which is have three artifacts of at least quality two in your treasury um and that will get us a stewardship point it will get us monthly prestige and vassal opinion uh, which is great and then there's also make a friend so we can make a friend and we get the trait popular and this gets us better diplomacy which can be used for things and basically what you want to do is try and build the best stats possible because it allows you to do the most things um but also don't be afraid that if you do have a character with kind of bad stats you need to work a way around his advantages and I'll hopefully cover that as we play um, become a paragon of virtue which uh, makes us known as the holy but also gains our learning gives us more piety uh, Catholicism has better morale authority a uh, moral authority sorry not morale authority there's no E in that uh, which I will also go into at some point become king of Ireland which is uh, something we do definitely want to try and do see the realm prosper which is try and uh, make our lands prosperous and our economy flourish uh, which is a uh, mechanic in the game and finally sorry we have build a war chest um, for the sake of what we're doing today I'm gonna kick kick click become king of Ireland um, because that's going to be kind of our goal to get us. That's where I'm going to end this tutorial series. Hopefully that by then I will have covered a lot of things. Um, so next to that, you have focuses. Now, any character can pick any of these. Um, unless, for example, they're imprisoned. Then they're a bit more limited. But this is what your character is focusing on at the time. And you have two of corresponding to each of the types uh, of skill. Except for personal combat because that works slightly different than most skills uh, that one's um, more open to ebb and change and um, things like that uh, as your character gets older or younger <laughs> not that someone can grow younger y you'll see what I mean but we have business and rulership for the stewardship focuses we have uh, intrigue and seduction 
for the intrigue focuses. We have hunting and war focus for the martial focuses. We have carousing and family for the diplomacy focuses. And we have theology and scholarship for learning. Now you see they all do different things. Business boosts the city vassal opinion but gives you plus two stewardship. Rulership just gives you flat stewardship. So there'll always kind of be one that gives you a flat thing of a uh, flat three on the stat and then there'll be one that gives you slightly less more other bonuses so you can see with intrigue we get th plus three intrigue and plot power increase for intrigue focus but seduction gives us intrigue plus two better fertility and sex appeal now also all of these have their own unique pathways of things you can do for example intrigue focus allows you to spy on people seduction focus allows you to sleep with other people's wives this is where CK2 gets really fun. Hunting allows you to go hunting. War focus allows you to duel people. Carousing allows you to throw lavish parties. Family, well, it just gives you events to in between your family to increase their opinion of you. Uh, theology is the one that gives you the ability to um, study um, religions and build a religious thing and scholarship allows you to build a an observatory and observe the stars i believe i might have got those two the wrong way around i don't play with these very often business allows you to build businesses and invest and rulership gives you events as if you were a king sat at the throne and peasants would uh, come to you with their problems for you to sort out now looking at our stats and what we need as a character. Our wife is 44. She's not going to be having any more heirs. We only have one son. Uh, I don't think that's too bad. We are 48. We do have a high learning. So I'm actually going to go with scholarship focus here. Because I want us... Yeah, I got it right. Let's build the observatory. Uh, we are going to try and become a scholarly man. And uh, become renowned for that. And you'll see why we do that in a moment. Now... Up here, I still have three alerts. You might have more alerts at the top that will guide you in early game, but I have certain ones turned off. We have an unmarried heir is the first thing. So our lineage currently isn't going to expand past our son unless he goes around shagging peasant women, which he might well do if you leave him to his own devices. Later. And although he's not very good, um, we can pad this out by finding him a better wife. Now, if you click the arrange marriage symbol here, it opens up a... A list of uh, suitors directly near you. Now, um, as you can see, and it gives you their stats and their traits, and you can work it out from there. And basically, it says, "Well, here's what the brides." And uh, it, it's it's like that thing in uh, uh, in the medieval period where they'd uh, it, people from different lands would come in with portraits of the people, and they get to choose. And this is how it works. And uh, so, let's have a look for a wife. So, he's a shy, proud, wrathful, honest tough soldier it's not great but can we buff him out with a wife and uh, one of these things I'm going to specifically look for a lustful wife um, she's slothful I'm not a big fan of her got an ambitious lustful French girl um, who's only age 11 she can't get married until she's 16. So there is a, an, a coming of age in CK2 where you have children um, and there's different education of them, which we will also get onto in later in this Let's Play. Um, we, I think I'm just therefore going to go for someone with high stewardship. Oh, we've got an Irish girl here, which might net us an alliance, which we'll be able to use. Would result in a non-aggression pact with Chief... Flathia of if that of Connacht. So we'll get this marriage. And um we'll have to unpause the game for that to progress. But before we do that, there's a lot more things we need to do. If we click the first tab, and if you have the Way of Life DLC or no Conclave DLC, um you unlock the council options. Now as you can see, we start off with a Chancellor of 12, a Marshal of 12. This is their their stat that corresponds to their colour. So there is a Councillor for each colour stat. And 
the higher the stat is, the better they'll do at their jobs. And then each uh, each character in the council can do different things. There's also, if you click the My Council tab, when you're a higher level... Um, when, once you're a higher level uh, kingdom title, you can unlock advisors and people that don't necessarily do anything, but it's good to put them in the council because they have a little sway. They might have a lot of land underneath you. So you want their advice and you want to keep them close, otherwise they might revolt against you. Um, but basically, these guys can all do things to improve your bronze. Now, we're playing as what's known as a tribal kingdom. So over here, we're playing as a tribal. So we're not feudal, we're not knights. We are playing as a collection of tribes. So they can do a little bit more than normal. And the reason I wanted to go for tribe is they're, they're a little bit harder, but also they're a, they give you a good understanding of the game because it's a little bit slower, so to, be, to speak. For the uh, But you can become feudal later, and we'll go on to that. Um, so our Chancellor, this is our diplomat. So you can have him perform statecraft, which... Uh, Allows him to, he, he talks to all your other counselors, makes sure they're all on your side and your vassals and he, uh, um, and he keeps everyone's relations good. Or you can have him improve relations, which um, allows him to, you send him off to someone else's land and get them to improve your relations with you, which has a lot of benefits. You can use that to sway someone into marrying into your family or help them gain an alliance and make sure that they'll come to war with you. Uh, so bonuses there. You can fabricate a claim, which allows you to try and claim other people's province. It's it's not the best way to, unlike in EU4, so to speak, if you're coming here from other Paradox games, it's not the best way to gain land in this. Uh, fabricating claims has a random chance, as you can see there. Uh, it has an 8% chance currently of happening yearly, and once it... Um, once it happens, you still have to pay for it as well. And then there's finally So Descent, which allows you to uh, ride, try and secretly rouse up the, the, the peasantry and the other nobles uh, under a different liege, and hopefully maybe they'll turn to your side. I don't tend to use this one, however. Um, that being said about the fabricating claims, I am going to do that right now because I want to try and claim this province here. This guy is the only other duke in um, Ireland, so we kind of want to focus him as uh, our our rival, so to speak. Uh, we we want to curb his power before he gets too strong. So now we got our marshal. We have organized the army, which um, is personally one of my favorite uh, commands to have a uh, a, a, a courtier do. Uh, it allows them to improve your commanders, your battlefield commanders, and um, it reduces the cost of your army. So it's it's good. And then you have suppressed revolts. So if you've got a high revolt chance in a province, send the marshal in. He'll he'll go police the area. You have trained troops. So if you've just had a war and you've lost loads of men and you need to get men back quickly, you can send your marshal to train in troops and it will uh, increase the amount of troop uh, recovery rate. And then there's organize a raid, which is something tribes can do. Has the possible or, uh, outcome to raise some special troops that you can combine with your own, and you can go raiding other people's counties and make all the money. Be a Viking, you know, that's how it works. But I'm going to leave him on organize the army right now while we get set up here. Um, then your steward, he is uh, the, in charge of the money of your um, in, in charge of the money of your nation. He can administer the realm, and he will try to improve your. Um, demands as a tribe and this is quite useful there's settled tribe so if you start taking land as a tribe that isn't of uh your culture you can send him to settle the tribes there and uh it will slowly try to sway the culture of the land much like the vikings did with dublin and they set up the city of dublin in ireland and that's historically how that happened and then you can oversee construction. So if you need a building built really quickly, um, you can send him to go oversee the construction of it. And then as a tribe, he can also build legend. Some of the other things a steward can do if you're a feudal uh, is he could collect taxes and give you the chance of getting extra money in, which is also useful. But build a legend allows you to um, gain prestige and also has a chance to raise a special troop of warriors who will help you fight for a limited time very nice i am actually going to have him build legend because i want those extra troops and i want that extra prestige because as a tribe prestige can be used to build buildings something we will get onto now 
our spy master. He is our keeper of uh, shadows. He is our, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, he is the spider. He is the person who uh, runs all the spies and uh, steals things and helps you plot. So um, he has scheme, which um, allows you to try and uncover um, plots in your region. And he, it's like the defensive spy action. Then you have Sabotage Province, which is the chance to um, sabotage them and uh, d d disrupt uh, ongoings within a province and give negative modifiers to, say, an enemy. Um, build Spy Network, which you can use on yourself or other people, which allows you to... Uh, other people's provinces, sorry. And allows you to increase your plot power if you're trying to kill someone. So he'll be working in to try and bri bribe off some guards and... Uh, and try to uh, get get the maid's favors so you can get into the room at night. And uh, the knife, therefore, will find its way easier to the neck of your enemies. And then finally, there's studying technology, which is the one we are going to do, which allows you to go to a different land and try and, you know, look at their technological advancements and learn from it. So we're going to I'm going to send him to the capital of France to do that. No particular reason other than the fact that they have a better technology than us in this land. So we'll go on to province technologies right now. Uh, oh no, no, no. We got we got to finish on the court chaplain. The court chaplain is your court priest. Uh, he can hunt apostates. So worshippers of Satan and heathens in your land, he can hunt them out and um, burn them to the stake. Great fun. As you can see, there's a little little person on a on a wooden pyre ready to burn. There's proselytize, which allows you to to convert the regions that you uh, you've conquered, say from uh, Sunnis or those who just don't follow your religion. Um, there's improved religious relations, which allows him to go and improve uh, your relations between the ruler and the church, either in your lands, or you can send them all the way to to Rome and improve your relationship with the Pope is a good thing to do and with a tribe there's the extra one of build build zeal not build zeal that's not english uh which allows you to try and get holy warriors and zealots raised so you can go hunt down heathens i'm not actually going to do that one i am going to improve religious relations with the pope right now Right, so let's have a look at our provinces. So if you click, this is our capital province. This is the province we directly own. You can either click on it directly on the map, or you can go over to your character profile and go to the Chieftain of Monday. Um, so, and then you can find it, which allows you to find it and click it on the map if you couldn't find it anymore. So that's a lot, that's very useful if you're trying to find uh, land in a large kingdom that you own. So this is the province. And over here we have you, who rules it. You have the capital uh, town or city or church or castle that's in the province. It's a tribe, so it's a tribal village for us. Uh, you have the name. It tells us it's our current capital. You can set it to the crown focus, which I recommend doing. This uh, weird graphic now that is cutting the head of our steward um, shows that we've set this as our crown focus, which means um, all of our focus and like extra money will uh, be funded into uh, making this land prosperous it doesn't actually show up in our money very much so it's a good thing to do because it increases the prosperity and we can get better taxes and then also it if we look down here to cut on to the next point uh there is the the, the remaining holding spaces in uh, the group. So these are called holdings, each of these things. So this is the primary holding and these are the secondary holdings. We have a secondary holding of a bishopric. There's a, the Bishop of Foucaulte, which I think is our marshal. So um, he's a member of our council and that's his land right there. And then there's space to build more um, holdings. So if you can see here, we can spend 24 prestige and we can... Uh, can uh, put a tribe here. However, only um, we can only have one tribe in each county because of tribal mechanics. And then if you click here, there's the extended province view. This is where you'd be able to build forts, trade posts, and hospitals. But we do not need to worry about this right now because one, we don't have, we're a tribal government. So none of this really matters. We're not technologically advanced enough to build a hospital, so to speak. And then there's the holding view. So if you click your holding, it shows you what's built there. And now you can see, um, Here's the different 
things within the holding. There's all the buildings. These are the ones we haven't built. The ones in green are the ones that we have. Now, you can upgrade ones that are already built, and you can build new things. As a tribe, you build them with prestige, mainly. So these are all our secondary buildings. These are, these are like, our barrackses and our... And our um, and our shipbuilders and our archery ranges and all the extra things to a castle. But like with all other CK2 uh, buildings, the main ones, the Earthen Hill Fort and the Market Village, are built with money. Now, as a tribe, there's a special mechanic that if you get one of these to level 5, so if you build the Earthen Hill Fort all the way up, or the Market Village, you can become a feudal government, so that you can turn it into a castle. If you get the hill fort all the way up to level five, you become a castle. You become a uh, you become a feudal uh, system of government, and that's how you get to a feudal government from a tribe. Likewise, if you build the market village all the way up, um, you become a merchant republic. Now we are going to be coming becoming feudal, so we're going to be focusing that. But we are still going to be building up our market village because. Once you change to a different type of government, all of these will convert to their respective one for a feudal government. So, this earthen hill fort will become the castle, market village will become the castle town. So it's good to have them leveled up before you do. So, if you want to see what this looks like, I'm going to use Kent as an example. See, Kent has a castle. If we click that, although you can't currently see it, because apparently Dover only has stables. Bad example. Let's go to Middlesex. Only has castle town. But you can see it's a different type of building, and it will convert to the new types once you've upgraded everything. I hope you're all following. If you're not, um, there's a good page on the wiki on how um, how these work, and I will cover it with live examples as we play through this game. Now, we've done our first moves. We've set our counselors to do what they're doing. Is there anything else that we want to do before we unpause? Well, I'm going to quickly take a look at the intrigue tab. So up here, you go along to intrigue. So this allows you to not only plot to kill people, it's not what we're doing right now, but it gives you your decisions. Now, if you remember, we took a scholarship focus. This allows us, therefore, to build an observatory. So we can lose 25 gold, but build an observatory and observatory sorry and start um researching the the sky and hopefully learning um learning something about it and uh, maybe maybe we'll uh, become famous for what we discover so we're going to do that um so up here we've got an event hey we've begun to construct an observatory it takes some time to collect all the necessary materials and get everything in order i can't wait good so that's just confirming that we've done that um, as you can see, this is the place that you also adopt um, the, the feudalism. Once you've got a castle, uh, once you've got the hill fort all the way up to level five, that's the that's the button you press. This is like the EU four missions and decisions, and then you have some other things here. So uh, you can hold a tri great tribal festival. Um, Cost you fifty gold, but uh, you can have a fo uh, festival in your county. Great fun. And you can also hire new people in. So you can promote commanders, holy men, nobles, and debutantes, which will give you random people to add to your um, to your court. And it allows you to get new courtiers. Um, there's also the option to found a new kingdom. So if we were to get three duchies uh, and have a realm size equal to 35, as well as have 1,000 prestige and 300 gold, we could become a king. Now, we're not going to use that today. We're going to be trying to found, find, found the Kingdom of Ireland itself, which you can find here. So that's what we need. We need to become King of Ireland. We need piety of 100 and 200 gold, roughly, and 51% control of Ireland. If you didn't want to found a historical kingdom, however, you could found a new kingdom and... Um, and do it that way and create a custom kingdom, which is great fun. And I do recommend you do it, but only once you've got a grip of the game. Now, over here, we've got uh, the option to do things such as compose books, something we'll go into later. Borrow money. If you're really tight for cash, you can borrow money for the Jews. You can search for a smith, which allows you to create artifacts and weapons uh, to help your characters out. Uh, but we're, we're, we're going to avoid those. So we've, we've, got, we've got our opening moves done. And is what we're going to do now is just unpause the game. And uh, over here we have the timer. 
This allows us to speed up how fast the game runs. I'm going to put it all the way. I'm going to put it to the speed four right now. Right, here's the marriage we set up. Uh, our wisdom and is legendary and mercy. A little bit there. Some generic spiel, but our wife, our wife, our son, and his daughter, uh, and our daughter-in-law have gotten married. So our son now has this wife, and they are married regularly. So there's two different types of marriage in CK2: regular marriage and matrilineal marriage, which determines where the which house the heirs will come come from so to speak so a regular marriage it will come the any children of this union will become of this house the the, ma the male's house if it was a matrilineal marriage however they would be they would, the descendants would come from the female's house so if you have a female ruler for example you want to become um you want to uh, have matrilineal marriages, otherwise you'll lose the game because the descendants will not be of your house. So hopefully these guys are going to start procreating and create me some grandkids because I want to survive. Now, as you can see, we've still got things to do up here. Let's have a look at minor titles quickly. Uh, notice that I've paused the game again, so if you haven't done that, you might want to. Um, Okay, minor titles are little uh, bonuses that you can give to members of your court to make them like you, for example, or they hold certain positions. An important one is your designated region. If you somehow become incapable, or um, if you um, if you go on a pilgrimage, for example, if you can't rule the realm, your designated region is the regent is the person who takes over. Sorry, I'm clicking things I really shouldn't be because I'm trying to show extra examples. So if we click here, we can give it to some... I want to sort this by opinion. I want someone who isn't going to ruin the realm for me um, while I'm away, if I ever if I ever go. I'm going to give it to this bishop. Sometimes I also like to give it to our heir, but currently our heir doesn't like us. Um due to him being deceitful uh, and due to the Gavelkind succession, which really shouldn't affect him considering he's uh, currently the only heir, unless he's not. No, no, he is the only, is the only heir. Do you know what? We can use one of the new things in um, Holy Fury, in the, the new update, uh, to change that. Let's make our son like us. Let's sway Kathmog, and uh, this will mean now we start to uh, change his opinion of us. He's trying to trying to build a positive opinion, and we'll get events that allow us to do so. Um, before we move on, I'll quickly explain some of these other buttons here. Here, you can't open it right now, is your treasury. So if we get any items, this is where they'll be stored, and you can find them for reference. Bloodlines is if our characters have famous bloodlines, you can check those here and see what bonuses they give you. Right here is your kills list. So if you kill anyone, have anyone murdered, anyone dies at your hand, it will be stored in your character's kill list. So you can track what happens to your enemies, which is quite nice. That's also a new update. These two here are new updates. And over here I also have go to the barber, which allows us to change our dude's hairstyle and beard style. Let's make him look like that instead. And we have leading armies. Um, this allows us to say yes or no to um, uh, if we want to be allowed to lead armies. I'm going to leave the fact that we will. Anyway, back to the minor titles. Um, over here we have Masters of the Horse. All of these are up to about Court, court Tutor. Don't really do anything. So, other than give opinion boosts and salary boosts to people within our court. So I'm going to make our son, who doesn't quite like us right now, Master of the Horse. I'm going to make our vassal, our only other um, house vassal. Uh, I, I'm going to give him Master of the Hunt. It was his daughter that we married as well, didn't we? Ah, and he is our vassal. Interesting. Okay, I inadvertently did something interesting there. Um, we can play with that, actually. I will show you what we can do as well. Probably in a later video, though. Uh, our High Almoner. I'm just going to go through and give these away. Uh, cup bearer. So Court Tutor is um, the person who will actually educate kids um, if you don't directly set kids to be educated by a certain person. So 
children when they're growing up i will explain this in a later video they have to be educated you can do that directly or indirectly this is setting up the person who will do it indirectly so i want someone who's quite learned uh robert it's gonna be you and then below the uh, normal um minor titles we have commanders i'm gonna quickly click show commanders only just so we don't have to scroll down these are the people that lead your armies into battle but i will go into the we already have those all set up I will go into those when we actually declare war. Um, all these are... Now, I hope this gives you a good sort of feeling of how to set up CK2. I hope you've all enjoyed this first. But, and uh, I hope you're ready to start playing. Because in the next episode, there's a lot of talking. I've done a lot of talking at you. I hope that we can um, develop our court from what it is to start off with. And uh, actually go on the war path, maybe. But I'll see you in the next one, and uh, do stay tuned for more tutorials from me. Bye-bye.